is actually a problem that if it is being so so we're using ai from product design product to process Imagine your app having a real conversation, not with robotic responses or slow chatbots. I'm talking about real fluid, real-time conversation with natural sounding voices. That's exactly what Zigo Cloud has created. And today, I'm going to show you how exactly it works. Zigo Cloud just launched their new conversational AI agent. And if you are building with AI, this is a toolkit you need to know. It lets you build AI-powered voice calls, video, and chat right into your app. With low latency and full customization, you can sign up right now and get 10,000 free minutes to start. Just head to the link in the description and open comment. And on the company's site field, type Influencer to register. Let me show you how it works. Here is the Zigo Cloud console. Smooth, fast and easy to navigate. From here, I can spin up an AI agent with just a few clicks. Customize its look, voice and personality. It enables chats and voice calls replies just in milliseconds and even integrate it into social, entertainment, healthcare, education, e-commerce and even IoT. Text replies show up in under 500 milliseconds. Voice responses happen in about one second. That's real-time and natural conversation. Whether you are building an AI companion, a customer support chatbot, a virtual tutor or even a healthcare assistant, Zigo Cloud gives you the SDKs and APIs to do it fast. You get real-time video and audio, rich chat features, cloud recording, free training agents, content moderation, memory, personality control, and full LLM support. And yeah, it's all backed by a global network for stability and speed. If you are ready to level up your AI app, click the link in the description to claim your 10,000 free minutes. Start building with Zigo Cloud's conversational AI SDK today. This video was made in partnership with Zigo Cloud. Let's be smarter. Let's get into the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so my name is Dennis and I wear two hats. So firstly, I'm a software engineer. And secondly, I'm the founder of InnovoTech Lab, which is um, an initiative where we nurture the next gen of tech innovators. Yeah. So what get you into tech in the first place? Yeah, so there is a story my parents and my sisters tell me. They tell me how I used to destroy stuff. There's one uh, thing that has to do with my, my, my uncle's watch. He came to visit and I tore the watch apart. They still talk about it till this day. And also the first time I saw a computer, I think I was in preschool. They brought it in. My parent, my, my dad and my sister set it up and there was no mouse. They said, where's the mouse? And I thought I was going to see an actual mouse connected to the electronics. So yeah, that was my entry level into technology. And that really fascinated me. It was a Pentium 2, a tower system unit and a CRT monitor. Yeah, so that's, that's where it all started from. And from there, my love for tech just skyrocketed, basically. So I think that's the power of the rest. Uh, so just on my side. Very personal technology and how the key is going to sound like you don't know. Now, yeah, yeah. Being at the account, oh no. Do you enjoy being software engineer? Yes, I do because, um, I, I, you know, people know it's not really a straightforward field to enter. Like, lots of, um, how do I put it? You go through like lots of um, struggles, learning and all of that. But I really enjoy it because it gives me the ability to build, which is something I really love. So that is what makes it easy for me to be a software engineer. And that's why I love about it so much. The ability to build without um, worry, especially, you know, with software, when you mess up, you just delete it and start over again. Yeah, so it's an e even an easy way to even enter into any form of um, building or engineering field, software. I mean, you just need a laptop and internet access. Yeah, so that's what I love about it. The easy entry, being able to bring your ideas to life easily without any form of stress. As a software developer, are you scared of AI? So I was a bit um, tensioned because I wake up every morning and Google has done this. The next time DeepMind has done this. The next time OpenAI is doing this. The next time it was all over the place, basically. Yes, but I have come to accept it in my field because I feel who else is supposed to adopt a side, um, I think it's mainly supposed to be those in the field, like those in the technology, they should adopt it first. So 
I'm just surrendering to learning the AI and then incorporating it in my work. Yeah, I know. I used to feel it means I'll be coming obsolete. It was mental headache for me. Like it was a headache for me for a very long period of time, but I've come to accept it. And now I've even uh, incorporated it into most of the things I, I teach and at Innovo Tech Lab. Okay, so it helps you, it boosts your productivity or oh. oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Yeah, so um, when it comes to prototyping, I also really like working with ideas and then bringing things to life. So in less than three hours, I was able to prototype um, a UI interface of an idea I've been thinking about for like two years. I spoke to my friend and he said, there's this other friend of ours who brought the same idea. So I just sat down, I used V0 and Keza I just built the whole thing in like less than 20, uh, uh, two hours. And it was just the user interface. Yeah, there was no backend, but at least that's a good prototype to show to people to see what they think about it to even proceed. I mean, this is, this is not possible. It wasn't possible years ago. Yeah. That would have taken me about a month or two months and without proper sleep to do it. But I was able to do it in less than two hours. And that's impressive. And I think it's with time, it's going to really increase our productivity. I believe it's not about the tools it's about the idea oh. yeah our forefathers I, I was in the car with my 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 uncle and he said they used to walk from gomua kraman to kaswa which is a very long distance i mean but now we have cars and cars are very accessible but they used to walk and i was wondering why so those who walk should they feel bad or maybe those let's say maybe there were horses and cats uh, that's carried people should they feel bad no they should also rise to the occasion and then move ahead so that's what i think um these AI tools are doing for us. So meaning if you don't adapt, you'll be left behind. Yes, of course. That's what is happening. Yeah, that's what is happening currently. So those who don't adapt are being left behind. And it's will eventually become massive. It's 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 going to get worse. I mean, for those who are not adapting, they should know that it's going to get worse because the tools are just getting better and it's scary. Uh, it's, it's getting better at a crazy rate and it's very scary. Yeah. So you made mention of Keza. What's your experience with Keza compared to VS Code? So, um, so Keza in itself, for those who might not know, is a fork of VS Code. VS Code is an open source um, coding editor created by Microsoft, right? Now, what the people at Keza did was they weren't having access to um, do certain things with AI because it wasn't so open with the open source VS code, right? So what they did was they decided to fork the entire VS code and then built upon it instead. Okay. Is this secure? Um, so that is not my field, but I mean, when it comes to data security, I, I don't really trust these companies. I'm very skeptical. So when it comes to professional work, I, I do not tend to use those AI models. Wow. What's one of the projects I'm trying to work on is trying to, um, run these um, models locally and then integrating it with my IDs. There is this software called Olama, which allows you to run these large language models on your computer locally, and which is very secure. I mean, you don't have to worry about your data being given to Meta or OpenAI or any other company. That's what I'm currently looking into. And if I'm able to set that up, that's good for me. So aside that, when I'm working on projects that are um, very has sensitive data i don't try i only use it for my personal projects oh, especially with keza okay. yes so here and i just use the ones that are inbuilt into the id like um code generation code completion those are the ones i usually use oh. yes but with the full-blown um vibe coding stuff i don't do it in oh, you're like production vibe i'm not against it okay. but i mean for ideas i think okay. it's a good thing but in production, a company's production workspace, uh, I don't think it's a good idea. That's my opinion. Oh, yeah. okay. Once we to one thing I found is they like to do it All right, they like to do everything on their way. Right come up with certain things with it, you feel like you need no one. Uh, but little do you know that the people are there, they are on a prison. When they find out that there's a particular skill with someone yeah. that they don't have, yeah. they see that an opportunity to actually love that skill, to add up to this, or a way to bring something back on. Okay. 
So if you are in this field and you look forward to really scale and reach a wider audience, it is better to leverage on communities, right? Partnerships, mentorships, you know. Um, there is this this profound statement that um I heard that your next breakthrough can be from just one conversation. In the career field, we don't have something like I'm introverted, right? Having a system is one thing, okay. And people don't with this system. There's a lot of technicalities around it, like AI liveliness check, geofencing. But the thing is, people don't really care about all these technicalities within them. How is it going to solve their problem? So communication is also a key. How will you be able to communicate what you want to solve, all right? For them to understand that it is actually solving their problem. That is what it is actually going to make you make a difference. Because you can have a very good system, you can have a very perfect system, but if you're not able to communicate it out there, Mr. Prince Okwampa, he said this thing that if you your skill set is 100% and you're able to communicate only 40%, you'll be perceived to deliver only 40%. Yeah. But if even your skill set is 40% and you communicate 100%, people will perceive you to be 100%. And the goal is to get people or opportunities looking for you. So if you are being perceived 100%, then the opportunities will come looking for you. And even if you are not able to deliver, you get to learn and improve. And next time, when the other opportunities come, you realize that you're able to deliver and you are moving on in your journey. So what one piece of advice will you give it to someone going into tech? Yeah, so I have a couple of things. First of all, you should be curious and be willing to explore. If that willpower is not there, I mean, you basically be wasting your time. Yeah, and you also have to fight through it yeah i mean step one is always the most difficult one because you don't know how to adapt to your situations there was a time where i wanted to start into robotics in second year the times where i used to get angry delete everything from my laptop and then say i'm done and in two months i go back again yeah so that was a process for me so just be patient at it keep going get the right people around you mentors have been played a, a very instrumental role in my life a lot of mentors, a lot of mentors have helped me. I have had also had friends. Having friends who are also in the journey with you is also very good. I mean, you can't be doing it alone because you will have people who will even mock you. I mean, you say that, I want to build flying cars. And then you have friends who are just laughing at you, thinking it's impossible. It's easier when you have people as such around you. And also keeping at it, consistency is key. If you're able to... Um, Build consistently, build your skills consistently. That, that would really shoot you up because that's one of the things we human beings lack. Yeah, eventually get tired and stop. All those challenges will always be out around, but that's opportunity for us to come together to innovate. And don't forget to like and subscribe.